Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A sister is asking a question that why bad things happen to good people? Why Allah sends trials and calamities? What is good in it? All I see is suffering. I understand if um, someone is evil, then Allah may punish him for his evil. But if a person always uh, does good, then why Allah doesn't give him good in return? Why do I have to go through pain and difficulty in my life? Please tell me why. Uh, my dear sister, there are many reasons for why bad things happen to good people, which inshallah I will explain in details. But before I begin, I want you to understand that it is all natural to be affected by the calamity. But that effect should not take you to the certain stage where you say or do things to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, La yus'alu amma yaf'alu wa hum yus'alun. He cannot be questioned for what he does, but they will be questioned. So, uh, in such situations where you cannot understand the reasons behind your calamities, know that it must be good, otherwise Allah would not have uh, allowed this to happen. You may not be able to understand uh, the wisdom behind why Allah uh, decreed that misfortune or that calamity, but you must know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything in accordance with His wisdom. Your happiness lies in being pleased with Allah's decree for you and in knowing that it is better for you. Now, inshallah, let's begin with the apparent reasons other than the Allah's hidden wisdom um, for sending uh, tests and trials and calamities in the way of his righteous believers. So, um, the first reason is to test um, their faith and taqwa. Because Allah SWT says, Allah di khalaq al mauta wal hayata liyablu wakum ayyukum ahsanu amala wa huwa al aziz al ghafur. It is Allah who has created death and life that He may test which of you is best indeed. Allah tells us in this ayah that He is the creator of death and life, and the purpose for our creation is to test us. This life is nothing but, but a test. This is why we place uh, us on this earth um, to see whether we choose Him or not to see whether we would remember him or not, or to see if we would try to please him. And when we do um, uh, all these actions, uh, remembering him, uh, trying to please him, uh, to choose him over everything else, um, uh, this is uh, what he describes here as the best of deeds. Um, now the question is, what exactly are the best of deeds? The best of deeds are the deeds pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deeds uh, we only do for His sake, the deeds done in accordance with His law. Also, please understand the important point here um, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He created us to test us, um, this does not mean that uh, He needs to test us in order to know whether we will do good or evil. Uh, he already knows what we will do. Rather, our um, playing out the actions of this life is simply a proof um, for or against us on the Day of Judgment. Um, the second reason uh, is to raise their status uh, in Jannah due to the difficulty they go through in the uh, life. Sometimes Allah SWT sends trials and difficulties to His obedient uh, patient slaves to raise their status in Paradise. Prophet ﷺ said, no Muslim is heard by a thorn or something greater than a thorn except that Allah elevates him in rank or erodes his sins because of that. Calamities are good for the believers in the sense that uh, reward is stored up for uh, him in the hereafter. His bad deeds are expiated uh, through trials and his patience um, earns him a great reward. And his status will be raised until he reaches his final status in paradise, inshallah. Hassan al-Basri uh, said, do not present uh, calamities that comes and, uh, uh, and disaster that occur. For perhaps um, in something that you dislike will be your salvation and uh, perhaps in something that you prefer will be your doom. Uh, and Al-Fadl bin uh, Ibn Sahal said that there is a blessing in a calamity that the wise a man should not ignore, for it erases sins, allows one to attain the reward for patience, dispel negligence, reminds one of the uh, blessings at the time of health, calls on to repent and encourages one to give charity. 
So there is a goodness in the calamity. Uh, the third reason is to uh, protect them from uh, greater harm. Calamities and trials are a sign of Allah's love for a person because they are like medicines. Even though it is bitter, uh, despite its bitterness, you give it to the one whom you love, right? Let me explain um, good and evil from a relative perspective. Um, you see, uh, what may appear to be good to you may be evil, and what seems to be evil may be good for you. We see this happening in our lives uh, a lot of times. When you, for example, take your child to a doctor to give her a flu shot, your child may ask what is good in it. Um, you know, why you're giving me a flu shot? All I can see is needle going into my arm uh, and it's hurting me, it's painful. What is good in it? Can you explain to your three-year-old child that it is good for her? The three-year-old mind uh, is not capable of grasping that good which is in the inoculation and injection. injection. She can only relate to the harm. Uh, you, however, as an adult, can understand that lesser evil is used to prevent the greater evil. Children can't grasp that, right? In our own lives, um, sometimes the good cannot be uh, perceived. At times, bad things happen to us, but we realize later that um, it was better for us. The fact is that if we uh, cannot find good behind the calamity, it doesn't mean that there is no good. Our lack of knowledge is not a proof that there is no good behind the trials and calamities. The fourth reason is to purify them uh, from uh, their sins. Hardship and adversity work as a cleanser. It cleans our soul from sin so that uh, we don't face the consequences of those sins in the hereafter. All of us are naturally inclined towards sin, even the most of, uh, pious uh, amongst us. All of us feel the urge to sin at some times in our lives. Uh, we fail to resist the temptation, all of us fall short, commit sins and make mistakes. But when a person uh, commits some sins and seeks Allah's forgiveness, if he is sincere in his repentance, Allah accepts his repentance. However, if he doesn't, um, um, uh, if he doesn't repent, Allah sends his punishment. As Allah SWT says, مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّيَاتٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ Whatever of good reaches you is from Allah, but whatever evil befalls you is from yourself. This verse is a warning for sinners that whatever hardship or misfortune is befalling on them is the consequences of their deeds, so they, they may return to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fifth reason is to unattach them uh, with this worldly life. Adversity and hardship is a very effective reminder for those good people. Um, uh, who are too much indulged in this worldly life. Let's face the fact that good people may not be as devoted to Allah as they should be. And due to their uh, being too preoccupied with this worldly life, Allah sends uh, trials and calamities as a reminder to turn them back to Him so that they make um, Allah uh, the focus of their life and not anything else. Um, Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah said, that uh, a calamity that makes you turn to Allah is better for you than a blessings which make you, uh, which makes you forget the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, the sixth reason is to um, remind them of Allah's absolute authority. The trials and calamities are sent to good people to remind them that Allah is in control. To remind them that they need Allah in every minute of their lives. These calamities forces them to examine the reality that they are in fact a weak creation who has no power or strength except in their Lord and that they should resort to him and depend only upon him. Sufiya Nathar uh, Athari uh, Rahimullah said that what a person uh, dislikes may be better for him uh, than what he likes because what he dislikes causes him to call upon Allah whereas what he likes may make him heedless. Um, now, uh, the seventh reason is to uh, test the level of their patience and devotion to Allah's Deen. As Allah SWT says in the Quran, Am hasibatum an tadkhulul jannata wa lamma ya'lamillahu alladheena jahadu minkum wa ya'lamu sabirin. 
or do you think that you will enter paradise before Allah tests those of you who fought in his cause and also tests those who are a sabirun um, through calamity the believer seeks reward and there is no way to attain um, to attain it but uh, through patience and there is no way to be patient except with unwavering faith and strong will the reward um, is affirmed regarding every kind of harm or hurt uh, tangible or intangible if the believer is patiently persevering and anticipates the reward the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said how wonderful is the believer, affair of the believer for his um, affairs are all good and this applies to no one but the believer if something good happens to him he is thankful for it and that is good for him if something bad happens to him and he bears it with patience um, then that is good for him subhanallah now um, the eight, re eight reason is to reveal the reality of this life the trials and calamities shows us that this life is a um, temporal stay for amusement and the perfect life is the one after that it reminds us of allah's favor upon us and how this is only a transitional existence uh, it is um, it's uh, put a check on our behavior as a reminder that we should not be in such a state uh, of joy that we feel arrogant likewise we should not be in such a state of sadness and grief that we feel despair it gives us a chance to repent uh, on our shortcomings and defects so that we can uh, repent from them before the day of judgment the ninth reason is to polish them and cause to grow up in them high qualities of virtues allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with so many capabilities and astonishing potentials but these qualities um, capabilities and potentials are hidden in us they are like uh, yarns under the ground which do not come out without proper means and do not reach to the stage of excellence these qualities um, and capabilities will only open up after experiencing the hard test and trials it's it's like a diamond um, after it's been polished we are all diamond in um, in the rough a diamond is nothing more than a clump of carbon right but intense heat and pressure cause carbon to become a diamond as with diamond so it is with you and me trials calamities test difficulties closed doors unmet desires are all meant to bring our true worth value and strength to the surface the incredible pressure we face during hardship and trials cause the hidden talent within us to emerge. Allah SWT uses the intensity of crisis and the force of adversity to rid us of every impurity that we would otherwise uh, both weaken our spiritual and um, mental strength. When you finally emerge from the very darkest, crushing, breaking experience in your life, you emerge the strongest and the brightest you have ever been. Lastly, understand that uh, there is no one on this earth who is not put to trial unfortunately we lose few brothers and sisters during this process of um, testing and trials they walk away from the faith right at the point in the process saying how uh, how could allah allow this to happen to me where is allah why he is not getting me out of this pain right now why did he do this to me but you know what it's always uh, darkest before the dawn when life cuts you the deepest and problem uh, problems strike the hardest that's when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings out uh, the best in you the more you are tested tried cut and polished the more light you are able to reflect the more you overcome the more valuable you ultimately become to allah and to his creatures those who suffer the greatest pressure the most agonizing trials the severest losses are the ones who shines the most your trials don't define you they define you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a special purpose and a special plan for you every problem every conflict trial hardship and opposing forces is shaping and polishing you calamities trials and problems in your life are um, are a guidepost along your journey without problems or challenges 
you would never change. There is amazing power available in them. But only to those who are willing to stop, take stock and reflect on where they are in the, um, in the life in relation to where Allah wants them to go. So always seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, during your trials and say um, oh Allah I seek refuge from you from such trials in which I may not uh, come out successful and through it I may not be able to please you I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, make us from those who when afflicted uh, with the calamity truly remember and manifest the sayings of Allah inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'oon and anticipate the reward from him and Allah knows best assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh